time too, baby girl, you a die, you the truth. People can't stop, they staring, they looking at you. Fixed everybody, baby girl, now you feel brand new. Lights giving extra paparazzi is all on you. We will be posting clips from Beautiful Disaster Talk Show, and you guys will be the first to see it. You're gonna laugh, you're gonna cry, and maybe even make a friend if you comment on our post below. Subscribe to Beautiful Disaster today, and we'll see you real soon on our YouTube page. Hi guys, and welcome to Beautiful Disaster. I'm your co-host, Tamika Ray. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about our show. Our show is based on cosmetic surgery and self-love. And we have a lot of guests come and interview about their experience with cosmetic surgery. And it's because they didn't have enough self-love. But our first guest of the season is our beautiful founder, Monique Stewart. So you guys help me give her a wonderful welcome. She has a story and a journey to share with us about her um, cosmetic surgery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, <clears throat> before you had the surgery, I hadn't seen you for in a long time. Then when I saw you at the Sam Club or something like that. Yeah. And then you said, I'm finna have surgery. Okay. I'm finna, <laughs> finna go do it. Yeah, you were happy. I was like, okay. <laughs> she finna come go to the surgery. She finna get back and she finna be... You know what I'm saying? Doing the right, thing. exactly. And then you went ahead to surgery, mm -hmm. and you would post on social media like every now and then. And I comment on your picture here and there, or whatever. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, Monique will be. He, I would think you probably were healing, but mm -hmm. you know, you you well, you was okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like working and living a normal life, but you went. Mm -mm. <laughs> so <laughs> what happened? What what happened from the time I saw you, you went to surgery, mm -hmm. and then you got back. What happened? Well, you know, it was something that I had always wanted anyway. Yeah. So I was real <laughs> excited. I really thought that I'd never be able to um, get the surgery did because, you know, financial reasons. But after I had found, you know, a way to get it done and save up the money and go and do it, I was really excited about going. And so I went and I chose to go to the Dominican Republic to have my surgery done mm -hmm. because of the cost and also not only because of the cost, but because of the extent of what they can do. Um, so like here in the States, you will have to lose so much weight before you have surgery. And some people just like, if I could lose the weight, I probably wouldn't have surgery. So, yeah. And I was about 250. So like when I see you, I probably was like 250 and... I was just, you know, my time was coming. I was excited about going. And I got ready, saved up my money to go, and went over there and and had this surgery. You did. Mm -hmm. ever I did. Since, ever since I met you, you were saying, <laughs> right. you going to have this surgery. And you always said you were going to go to yeah. the Dominican Republic ever since I met you. But, like, why, though? Because when I met you, you were small. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, when I first started, I would just want to have a surgery. I just wanted to have a big butt. So, really, that's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. As I started getting older and I had started gaining weight and the weight was uh, harder for me to lose, I said, well, I might as well get a tummy tuck and have a flat stomach and, you know, and get a big butt. Mm -hmm. So, actually, when I got ready to go have my surgery done, it was June 2017, last year, uh, I was supposed to be getting the BBL, which is transferring fat from your body into your butt, and also getting a tummy tuck and getting my arms did. Um, so just making my arms smaller and cutting off some of the excess fat from my arms. Mm -hmm. Was you scared? How did you feel? Well, I was nervous because I, this is my first time, you know, traveling outside of um, the country anyway. Mm hmm so I had, you know, got my passport before that and everything, and I was excited about doing that. But, yeah, I was kind of nervous. Like, that morning, I even had, like, overslept, and my flight was canceled when I woke up. I, you know, taking extra money that I had, buying me another flight, mm -hmm. and just waiting on my refund from the other um, uh, air, airline. Mm -hmm. And so, um... You know, I cause I was determined to go and go get the surgery. So do you think I was it was just God saying, "Good, don't go." Probably so. 
Don't go good. Just stay. Yeah, probably so. Because even my kids, they was like, they didn't want me to go. You were determined. Yeah, I was determined to go. And when you got there, who who greeted you? Because it's a new, whole new country. Mm -hmm. So, like, how did you maneuver around? So, there, when you go um, out of the country to go have surgery, um, when I, I went to the Dominican Republic, they have uh, recovery houses. So, the recovery houses are basically just like a normal house that somebody would buy or rent or whatever. And they would set up rooms and beds in that house from um, people like me to come over and get care while you're recovering there before your flight. Because you can't just have surgery, hop on a flight, and go home. Mm -hmm. um, normally, the people that they hire there are probably kind of like CNAs. Mm -hmm. So, that's who be uh, uh, there taking care of you. So, when I first got off the plane, I had um, a Dominican guy. And he had my name, you know, like it is on a movie or something. Had my name on a little paper. And he was you waiting on like me. Stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, I'm about to be on it. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it was so many girls there. Um, You know. So, you okay, so you got there. Mm -hmm. The man came and got you. Like you used to live and drove you to wherever you had to go. And then what? Yeah, so when I first arrived there, I went to go do, um, like, my block vitals and blood work. So I went straight to a facility. It was late in the evening, probably about 7 or 8. I went straight to one of the facilities and got, like, blood work, um, x-ray, um, stuff like that did. And then um, he took me, after all of that, he took me to the recovery house where I met up with the, the lady that does the consultation. Solicit. Right, and um, some other girls that were there waiting to have surgery as well. And so um, they had dinner for me and stuff. We was just laughing and joking um, until about 30, 45 minutes later, one of the girls that had arrived the day before me was just coming back from the hospital from her surgery. Okay. And so she was all bandaged, bandaged up, looking like a mummy and whatever. And so I just kind of got nervous then, but I was still ready. I, I got kind of nervous, so I just tried to get some rest because I knew the next morning I was going to have surgery. Did they? Did the, any of the girls that was already there that had already came out of surgery? Did they tell you, you know, how it went, how they felt, or anything, or they couldn't talk, or what? Well, our room was private, and then it was the lady that had just had her surgery that mm -hmm. you know she came, and so when she was there, she was just kind of bandaged up, and you know she was asleep, so I didn't get the really ask her nothing or anything like that. I was just kind of excited and then try to get some rest because I knew I was going to have to go to do the surgery the next day. So then when the next day came, who did, did the solicitor take you go to the surgery with you? Mm -hmm. The girl? She left. <laughs> she ain't no friend. <laughs> no, so the driver from the house, you know, they drive you there and it's just on from there. You just I mean, it's time. It's like you go into a facility and you wait to see your doctor and they mark you up. Okay, so she dropped you up. After she dropped you up, then you went right into surgery. Mm hmm So what was it like when you going into surgery? What was you thinking in your head? Because it, it got to be a process. It got to be like some mental stuff going on. No, I was really just very, very excited. Until they told me, you know, you had to get like a, um, the medication that I was going to be taking to be put to sleep was like the epidural. So then I got nervous because I just remember. Yeah, back? Yeah. So then I kind of got nervous because I was like, should I be in a Dominican getting a epidural? But then, you know, because they was telling you you could get paralyzed from it or something. Then I'm like, I'm going to let these folks cut up my whole body. So do it matter? Anyway, I, just, I started, and by then, you know, thinking that in my head, by then, I think I started kind of going in and out. Like, it was, it was over then. I had uh, started feeling all the medications and stuff. So, that was, that was pretty much it. What the room looked like? What the surgery room looked like? Well, they didn't take me into the surgery room, and I probably kind of understand why. They didn't take me in, into the actual surgery room until after I had got the um, medication to be put to sleep. Mm -hmm. And... All I remember, like, throughout my whole surgery, um, I was kind of, like, in and out. So, they didn't even put you to it sleep. It wasn't right? all the way sleep. Yeah, I wasn't all the way sleep. I, I could remember some stuff kind of in and out. It's like I could hear some stuff 
or whatever but it was just like in and out and i really i couldn't move or anything like that so like i know i could move my head a little because i did keep lifting my head throughout the surgery and um i couldn't feel anything but pressure i could feel like pressure but i couldn't feel like any pain or anything like that but as i was looking around the room that's when i got really scared um because so your the eyes room, were open open mm -hmm. yeah in the middle of surgery yeah yeah, like I remember one time them. they even told me to put my head down. They were like, keep your head down because I kept Lay looking down, up. Right. Because <laughs> I kept looking up. Because I kept looking up because when I looked and I looked around the room, it looked like some off of a... Scary. Yes. Jake. Yes. I don't remember even... Now, I might have just been tripping off the meds or something, but I don't even remember seeing any... Um, equipment like you know professional doctors equipment i remember seeing like tools so it was it, it what just kind of tool? tools like i guess like a man have tools well he worked on the car too <laughs> <laughs> look look like tools out of a dentist office or something in the um somebody like garage drill. or right it was just like tools all i remember seeing like tools and you know how, like, when you in a dentist's office or a doctor's office, most of their tools come in packs that are sealed or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember seeing none of that. I just remember seeing the tools out. They and, laying on the little table. And I was, like, on a table. They have a, um, in, in surgery, they, they'll have a table. They do be in a pack, though. And mm -hmm. then they have some, but they have somebody to take them out of the pack and lay them on the thing so we just gonna hope right that they this was yeah we just well, gonna hope that that will happen <laughs> hopefully but from the looks of it probably not <laughs> so you got through with surgery how long was the surgery um the surgery my surgery i think it was like seven hours girl yeah with no like you was not sleep you were just numb well, I think I probably do. I think I probably went to sleep a couple times. I mean, yeah, I know. I just know and remember that I was in and out because I remember some stuff and some stuff I don't like. I remember um, them flipping me over. I guess from the front to the back or from the back to the front, and then like I remember um, when they was trying to put on my garment, like the suit that I put on after the surgery or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I kind of remember that too. Was anybody like checking your? Blood pressure, your vital signs, vital signs mm -mm. and stuff. Mm -mm. They didn't have you hooked up to a blood pressure machine while mm -mm. you was. Girl, this is a real, this is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's it was, a whole movie. Yeah, it it was. You know what? I I never had thought about that. So you just said that today. Girl, I'm saying you know how you in in over here. Yeah, be hooked up to something or something. Yeah, yeah nah. Your blood pressure go too high, anything can happen. I guess they check it sporadically, but as far as like being on a monitor or something, no. Was it cold? I can't remember if it was cold or not. I don't know why I asked that. <laughs> <laughs> I just it's just the way the picture painted, it seemed like it might be cold in there, like a right, cold yeah. cement wound. No, I don't. I can't really even remember, but no, it was nothing there that I was um, being monitored by um, after the surgery. Like I said, they put on my garment. So then I was taken back to the recovery house. Um, and so I just thought like, okay, I'm going to start the healing process. Everything going to be good. Mm -hmm. But then, what happened? Well, um, I just had noticed like all the girls that had surgery and the people that was in the house from different rooms, they was eating throughout the day they was woke throughout the day they was laughing they was talking about their surgery and taking pictures and showing it. but i couldn't stay woke mm. so i was wondering why i couldn't you know stay woke was it the medicine or you weren't taking anything right I, I was taking um medicine they give you like antibiotics and different stuff take pain stuff and all this and that but every time that it was time for me to take medication or eat or whatever they would have to wake me up and so I was still falling back to sleep like I couldn't stay woke. And so um, I started like slipping off into like a coma almost. Mm -hmm. I had lost so much blood that um, I, it, it just, I just wasn't stable. 
And so um, I asked one of the girls, was it normal? And then they finally decided to call um, a doctor in to come and check my blood levels and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I was immediately taken back to the facility so I could get blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that was, that took, what, two days, three days? How long that took? Yeah, so I was there for probably about two two days. Um, and they had to, it took a while for them to get the blood, uh, wherever they have to get it from there. Um, like, a, like a day or just a couple of hours or something? Probably about... I say about twelve, fourteen hours to get blood, and you were that long. Yeah, blood? and so I had to get two bags of blood, and I say bags because it was literally the blood came like in a bag, like a ziploc bag, like a bag. And so they came in, they gave me the bags, and they told me to hold it, you know, too close to my body for like an hour or so. So I guess could you get like my body temperature or whatever. I was just trying to like get better at this point so I could just kind of go home. So after I got the blood though, as I was even as I was getting the blood, I started instantly feeling better. Mm -hmm. Like I started, you know, feeling a lot better. So um, I received the blood and you know I thought I was recovering there. It was very very hard, but I thought that's how it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I ended up staying in the Dominican Republic for like almost four weeks, almost a month. So I was like three weeks and some days, and then you know it was time for me to come home. Mm -hmm. I was in a lot of pain, but I just thought it was normal. So what happened when you got home with your with your um your scars and your wounds and stuff like that? Cause you were still open. Yeah. So then you got home, then what was that process like? Well, when I first um, got home and everything, I really thought everything was going to be okay. But then things just started getting worse and worse and worse day by day. So um, the incision to where I got my tummy tuck, it started opening up more mm -hmm. and leaking uh, fluids and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I'm going to, you know, the ER, trying to see what's going on. I was getting turned around and a lot of frown because I went to the Dominican Republic to go have surgery mm -hmm. and I guess a lot of doctors didn't even want to deal with it. So But that ain't no it don't it should it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter did they tell you did it give you a reason? Did they say because Yeah, it, because I went to the Dominican Republic. But I'm saying what that got to do with you being sick now I get I I guess um a lot of doctors are really I mean, I even had a, a doctor, a female doctor, tell me here uh, in Atlanta that I, I you, you shouldn't have did it. They're like, basically, this is what you get. You shouldn't have did it. But you did end up finding some help. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, uh, it took a while because uh, I didn't have any kind of insurance. Um, I was going back and forth to different doctors. Um, different stuff was happening. I started having like liver failure from this surgery. How, um, how I, we never talked about that. How did you? How did the liver failure come? It did it come after from you just being so sick? Yeah, just or? afterwards. So after all the things that came about because of um, the surgery, um, the everywhere that they had cut or injected um, the fat or whatever or had cut or did anything. I guess it was infected, and I had later come to find out that it was a series of outbreaks of infections in the facility that I was in. That every girl that had surgery, like within that little time span, a week or so of the date that I did, mm -hmm. was infected all with the same thing. Mm -hmm. I even had a friend that, like, uh, well, she wasn't my friend, but a girl that was there when I was there that ended up like in a um in a walker or whatever, mm -hmm. and so um. From that infection, it just led to different parts of my organs being uh, having problems and different things like that. So I started to have like a uh, liver failure. So that's on top of your wound still open mm -hmm. and all that. So who who I know you told me a nurse came to help you. Mm -hmm. And so how did you find her and what did she do? Well, um the. The facility that I work for is um, kind of like healthcare facility. So, 
Uh, I come in contact with a lot of different people, a lot of uh, nurses and stuff like that. So I honestly just had reached out to her to ask her for her help. Mm -hmm. And she was nice enough to help. So once um, I had my wounds and stuff was opening up or the spots that were injected, just like they injected the fat into my butt and it kind of like exploded mm -hmm. and left holes and scars and stuff like that, I had to have it packed. Mm -hmm. and different things so she would do it for me and you know she never asked me for nothing or anything by her doing that they help the scars heal from the inside right because you would have to literally it was like holes so she would have to uh, you know every day um take uh gauze out of it pack it back in there mm -hmm. so it can kind of heal from the inside mm -hmm. out you know that had to be painful, though. It, it, oh, my God. It's the worst. And I used to be hollering and screaming. And she used to just be like, girl, if you don't shut up. <laughs> exactly. Ain't time for that. But now, they're healed. I mean, you mm -hmm. still have the, the scarring. But it's healed from the inside. But you have to have reconstructive surgery mm -hmm. from what? Well, um, right now, the point that I'm at after... Going through all of that and um, finally getting some kind of insurance and getting some help. Uh, the line along where I have my tummy to it still kind of builds up fluid. And sometimes the fluid, it leaks out. And sometimes it'll try to come from like my navel area mm -hmm. or that incision. So what my doctor is doing now is just trying to find a way where he can go in and redo that whole part in that area to... um just so the fluid won't keep coming back and building up and just kind of smoothing it out and, you know, flatten it back out. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I'll be getting that done soon within the next month or so. So I actually got a appointment tomorrow to go meet with him. Mm -hmm. They'll set a date. So I hope to um, be getting that done real soon. So what, and what about the butt? So, but you said that, you said that it exploded. So can you mm -hmm. explain that? So, like, what do you mean when you say that? So every um every place on the butt where they had injected the fat with the needle, mm -hmm. it kind of in um kind of swole up to like a pus or a ball, mm -hmm. and they they bust. So like it was too much. It was like probably my body was rejecting the fat, and it was, and it was just trying to come out, okay. or either it was an infection that was coming out of my body. Okay. Yeah. So. All of that out, and so after mm -hmm. that, it's just what's naturally there. So they well, look, after that, it's just like a hole or something. You know, you pack it until they all heal up and mm -hmm. different things like that. Because I can remember even going to work some days with five or six take up abdominal pads, and galls are small. Mm -hmm. Abdominal pads are huge. Mm -hmm. So five or six of those, you know, at a time. So who helped you besides the lady, the nurse? That's really it. The her, my kids, myself, going back and forth to the emergency room, and these different doctors that I had. So that was just it. I mean, every day was like a struggle because I was kind of bandaged up from probably from from here to to here. But I mean, I just did it. I had to wear adult diapers. Not because I was using it on myself or anything, but because my butt was leaking, my stomach was leaking. Mm -hmm. So I felt more comfortable putting the whole thing on mm -hmm. and then putting the pads around it to catch everything. So yeah. it was just, it was a hard little couple of months. Well, not a couple of months because I actually had to go through that for probably about seven months. Mm -hmm. So it it was hard going through all of that and then at the same time just dealing with it like all emotionally you know it kind of like changed changed my whole life a lot i'm getting past it because i'm doing a lot better than i was you know yesterday and i'm a uh, way better than i was you know five months ago so mm -hmm. so uh, and so now at this point it's just you went through the hard part mm -hmm. you gotta do your reconstructive surgery for your stomach just for the the swelling and the fluid so that can stop right and then the rest is just a mental thing just to get your you know what i'm saying your confidence all the way back yeah. to 100 and stuff like that 
yeah so i think i think like the rest would just be yeah just like you said just trying to build back up my self-confidence and different things i think about having another surgery to correct what i did wrong but then i'm like what if something else happened and stuff like that so i really just want to have like my reconstructed surgery and then just kind of try to move on with my life you know getting back to how i used to be my mental and getting everything you know to where i could just live a normal day to day normal a lot of people go to the Dominican Republic and they don't even make it back. Right, exactly. Because it was a female there that I had met that we used the same doctor that was there that actually had died while we was there. Wow. Yeah, she was from um, New York. Yeah, she was from New York. So, and she had been there a couple of times getting different surgeries. And, um, yeah, that, that, that time while I was there, she didn't actually get to go home. So, yeah. yeah. So, what's next? Well, you? <laughs> well, I'm just trying to get myself together as a whole. Like I said, I went through a lot of stuff, like mentally. Um, first of all, I wasn't, you know, just uh, secure with myself or um, within my body. And I thought, like, you know, having cosmetic surgery would help and would change that. And I just honestly think that regardless, if it would have went right, even though it went wrong, I still think, like, you know, it wouldn't have helped. You have to kind of, like, be um, mentally stable and good within yourself and just be able to accept yourself before you can try to change anything mm -hmm. on your exterior. So, definitely um, just working on my whole mental to try to, you know, just kind of uplift myself and have a lot of self-love for me and just be the, the best that I can be. Um, if anybody was thinking about having surgery, I would tell them it is definitely a whole mental journey. Mm -hmm. So, yo, I don't think that the pain that I experienced, like, physically was as bad as, like, the pain that I went through inside of my, you know, myself and inside my head. Mm -hmm. So, I would say that anybody that wants to do it, they should definitely prepare themselves. Mm hmm well, and that's why you created this show. Yep, that's why I created this show because I wear um, the name on a lot of my clothing and I represent everything and I just feel like, you know, I'm a beautiful disaster. I started off, you know, always being saying that I was pretty or beautiful and, you know, I wanted to change and it didn't go right. So I'm still, <laughs> I'm still like, at least I didn't get do nothing to my face. <laughs> Girl, don't you start, honey. So, tell everybody when they can see the show. Like, a, about a few of the people that are going to be on the show, and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. So, we are going to have a lot of guests that will be talking about self-love and bringing forth um, different awareness and to cosmetic surgery. Um, we'll give you guys some information on some do's and some don'ts, but most definitely just promoting ways that you can be confident within yourself and love yourself and different alternatives besides cosmetic surgery. Mm -hmm. So you guys should definitely tune in and watch mm -hmm. every time that we air and enjoy the show. Enjoy the show, you guys. Thank you. This is Beautiful Disaster, and we'll see you next week. Stay tuned for the Bye, entire season. Bye, guys.